guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Aki. This is the first time. And for those who are watching my channel, thank you so much for coming back. Today I wanted to share my tips about how to care for my fiddly big tree. Because um, I never thought this tree would be finicky, but apparently it's a very finicky plant as well. Um, so I thought... Um, I share my experience like how I um, care for my tree I bought this in May last year so it hasn't it's been like about 10 months or so it hasn't been even a year but um, when I bought it he <laughs> I exactly counted how many leaves he had because I, I was so in love I was looking at the leaves every day, but he had seven leaves, so it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. He was around this high, so, and this is how big he has grown. He's maybe triple the size, and he's still producing new leaves. I don't know if you can see it. You can see that he is producing new leaves, so he's still growing like all year long. And I think I've only lo uh, lost one leaf since I had him. So he must be happy, right? <laughs> so I wanted to share how I care for this plant and to share. <laughs> I don't know why, but like, I guess I never really noticed, but like I see a little bit of spider webs, but I don't think it's a spider mite. Just a maybe spider that lives in this tree. But anyway, so I wanted to um, share how I care for this tree. And also thought I would share this as well. My plant friend um, is struggling with this fiddly big tree. <laughs> and thought I could maybe try to see if I could get him back to healthy. So maybe I could check. But um... From what I see here, let me see. Well, there's some browning tips and then also like I see some yellow um, leaves. So yellow leaf means overwatering or doesn't, you know, have the, uh, the, the water is not draining so well. But right now it's so light, it's probably so dry, like, I don't know. It's really mixed because it has browning leaf and then also have yellowing and it's super dry. She said, uh, my friend said she will water every 10 days, but I'm going to have to check the root and see what's going on down there before, um, you know, to say anything. But um, I'm going to do that later. Hope I can get her back to happy. So, so my tip would be, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna move too much. So fiddly fig tree doesn't like to be moved around a lot. So you should not, as much as you want them, like you love them and you wanna touch them and like <laughs> hold them, <laughs> you should not be moving around. Like if you have a spot, you should keep it in that spot. I moved him like maybe two or three times, just that, you know, cause my kids just runs around everywhere and I didn't want them to bump into this tree but I keep this in my um, southeast facing window right by the window but not on the um, it's like one meter away from the window so it gets a good amount of morning sunlight it likes the um, indirect bright light and I think well it's really like some people say you shouldn't put in a direct sunlight, but I think morning sunlight is very um, gentle light. So, and mine gets a few hours of that light and it, it's growing so well and it's enjoying the sun. I don't see any sunburn or anything. So, it's very happy where it is. So, I put it in the southeast west facing window so it gets the morning light as well. And for watering, um, keep the water's uh, routine um, going. You don't want to water them too frequently or, you know, you don't want to keep them too dry. 
because it doesn't like to be too dried either. I do use um, all my water um, that I water my plants. I let it sit out over 24 hours so it wouldn't have any you know, harsh chemical. And yeah, normally water my Calicia and Piddly. And what else do I water? Um, Calicia, Maranta, Fiddly, Fig, and Alocasia. I think that's I think that's probably pretty, uh, sorry, that's probably it, but um, I water them with the water that sit out for 24 hours. And then um, soil would be, you need a well-drained soil. You don't want the, the water to be sitting too much in the soil. It would, it would cause the root rot. So I have the regular potting mix, perlite, and cactus potting mix. I don't think I have orchid barks in here back then. I don't, I don't remember using orchid bark. So it's a lot of perlite and um, mixture of cactus soil and uh, the indoor potting soil. And what else? <laughs> it's really hard to explain. Um, and then what I do is, because the leaves are big, it does get a lot of dust on the leaves. So. I don't know, like once, once in two weeks, or sometime I get lazy once a month, could be once a month. If I notice, you know, a little dust on the leaf, I would bring, um, well, because <laughs> I'm a mom of a toddler, <laughs> I have a butt wipes. <laughs> so I would just bring a butt wipe and, you know, wipe the leaf. And um, I do miss once in a while too. I don't miss every day, but like I miss maybe once or twice a week with the um, water with, I have alcohol. I don't know if you see my one of the video, what's in my plant box, maybe explain. I put some of these rubbing alcohol pad in my spray bottle with lavender oil and dish soap. So I just spray them with those. Um, they do like um, to be, I think they do like to be, um, they, like, they, they like the humidity as well. So I do spray them once in a while and then also wipe the leaves so that it gets, the leaves will get, actually it's really dusty. It gets a good amount of sun. It could absorb the sun from the leaves. And I'm sorry, what else? So about watering, I did have some problem back in the summer when I had a fungus gnat problem. Cause I was going too mad. I was spraying everything, like spraying, spraying, like madly spraying that the soil got like really soaking wet. That um, it did show, uh, uh, is it called the edema? You see a lot of freckles on the leaves. Like when the two leaves came out with like so many brown spots, freckles, I freaked out. I thought I killed my leaf, my plants. But um, since that I stopped being crazy about spraying and then I get my watering cycle like once a week I keep it to once a week and eventually um, I will find the picture when it came out eventually these freckles will expand the leaf will get bigger and the these freckles will go away not go away but they will like you know stretch out with the leaves so that you wouldn't notice so much but you can still see some of the freckles on this leaves right here but they're okay as long as you keep your water um, routine going and what was I going to explain and and and, and. <laughs> I'm sorry it's not really um, structured um, so it doesn't also doesn't like the drafts so don't put it near the window the way you, you know people go out in and out or where you open the window to let the let the air in i wouldn't like that I think it will start losing leaves so put it somewhere um that's not jackie area and i explain light i explain water i explain soil and i guess fertilizer would be i don't fertilize during the winter even though it's growing, I should. I know I, sh I like I probably should, but then instead I put um, coffee ground, the used one, 
from the morning. So I use coffee ground. I just pour it on top of the soil and then I, I won't water it, you know, at the time. I will wait until the next time I need to water because I don't want to break the routine. So I just keep the, just pour the coffee ground because I heard that they're really good for plants. And obviously, <laughs> it's doing a good job. So um, I use that during winter. That would be like fertilizing for this plant, I guess. But during like from the spring to autumn, I would use the fertilizer once a month. Like normally, just like beginning of the month, I would fertilize all my plants. So that's why he gets the fertilizer. And what else? I think that's probably it though. I can't, I really can't remember what else I need to explain, but I think I covered everything, right? So, and um, you do want to turn them maybe once a week, like rotate the plant every, you know, once a week because they do tend to grow towards the sun. So if you don't keep it, rotating it would grow you know like towards the sun so it won't be going straight up so mine is kind of like going as <laughs> like a little snake going up but it's okay it's it's going straight still and I do want to branch it out in the future but I don't think it's tall enough yet so I'm gonna wait until at least it's five feet probably this summer so maybe I'll do it next year spring but um, you could also do that. I will make a video if I need to do the branching method. But so this is my fiddle leaf big, and I want to check this guy here. Yeah, but like I didn't know this tree was this finicky. But apparently it is because I hear it. I hear a lot of people you know, commenting, they do leave a lot of leaves. Like so far, so this, this is really dry, dry. So I don't know, it could be underwatering. This it could be from the underwatering or the um, overwatering. Okay, I'm gonna put this back. And let's check the soil. Oh, I know what's wrong. Okay, so this is a problem. I think this is one of the reasons why you need to repot your plants. I mean, not right away, but like once it's settled. Because I see, um, well, this is not bad. It's not plastic. But I feel like that um, when they grow the plant from the baby or small plant or seed, they use this little fiber container and they just repot it with that on. Okay, the soil is super dry, but it's not really coming off. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to break any of these. So, yeah, because I don't see any root rot from the enemy. That's super dry though. It could be from underwatering, but um, I think one of the one of the thing that this tree was struggling is that I don't know if you see it, but there's a little bag inside. It's probably strangling the roots. It will probably grow through it, but it could be the reason why it wasn't growing so well. Oh shoot, <laughs> look at the time, <laughs> it's time to pick up my son, I need to stop this. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop once and then come back again, I'm so sorry for the lip tree. I'm gonna come back because I have to go get my son. It's just what happens when the other son does a nap, so I get lost of track. I'll be right back. Sorry guys, I'm back. <laughs> 
Okay, so, um, yeah, back to getting this guy repotted. I mean, they're all dry, so I don't know if it was a... It could have been, um, well, I'm not an expert. I can't really tell why this is not doing so well, but... Like browning spot could be also fungal infection or bacterial infection. I can't really tell, but um, the root seems to be okay. It's the only thing is that I hate this thing that they um, I guess they plant it with a seed, so they come with this little fiber thing and they're not they rip off really easily so I think the root grows through it but still kind of strangles and it gets really packed in the the soil gets really packed inside so I like to get this out as much as possible okay so I got most of the I think I got all of the fiber stuff out. I know these are really, um, it should be soft and, you know, the roots should grow through it. But still, there was, like, the soil inside was still packed and I didn't like that. So I took it off and roots seem to be fine. So let's see if I could just repot this guy and then cut off some damage leaf and see how he will do. Um, and so this is a mix that I have. It's potting, indoor potting mix and cactus mix and tar light and orchid barks. So it's really rich and it's also well draining. Let's see, it's a smaller shovel, which is the big. There. Okay, okay, so put it in back. I feel like this pot is a little bit too small. Now I think of it, maybe I give them a little one size bigger. Yeah, so this is like maybe inch bigger than the one that was in. Because the roots are pretty, I don't know where the ones are. The roots are pretty big, established, so... And I mean, this plant should be okay with the root bound. But I told you, I told you, mommy told you it was on her bed, didn't I? Mm -hmm. You say it wasn't there. So I'm gonna give him a little bigger pot and see. What's that? I don't know why you're this. I don't know what's this plant. Um. And it was um, really dry, so I'm gonna give them a really good soak. I don't want to soak it, but like I want to give them the water thoroughly, so the roots could absorb a lot of water. saw some videos on YouTube because I watch a lot of care tips on plants but as I was also watching how to care for um, fiddle leaf fig tree of course and I saw this tip if you want your fiddle leaf fig trunk to be stronger 
because in a in the wild <laughs> they they go through the storms and you know all the wind <laughs> you're supposed to like shake your <laughs> tree a little <laughs> i wonder if any of you guys do that <laughs> i'm a little too scared because you know they say that they don't like to be moved around but this person <laughs> on youtube literally took the trunk and was like shaking it like almost like strangling <laughs> So, if any of you guys do that to your tree, and it actually does strengthen their tree trunk, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> Please comment, and maybe I'll try from this summer too, to train you to be stronger. <laughs> so, the one of two, put it down. Okay. Okay, so he's repotted, and next, what is this? One? I need to sterilize, maybe a little bit more. want to cut off the damaged leaf so it doesn't need to send extra energy towards those leaves. Make sure to sanitize your scissor, especially me because I use this scissor for like everything. <laughs> so it's dirty. I'm going to cut this leaf off. It looks like this. I don't know if it's from drying or it looks more like a bacterial or fungal infection. It could be. And it's like most of the leaves have it too. And compared to my um, fiddle leaf fit, the color is so light. Like normally the leaves, the colors are really dark green and they're very um, like thick. Not like peperomia kind of thick, but like they're really thick. And these are very um, soft and built. It's more like cookie from dryness, but if it's from underwatering, I thought they'd become more crispy. So I'm gonna cut this one off too. It's got brown spots. Well, I might, might as well just cut the whole thing. Because these don't look healthy. I don't know. This has white spots. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, these are really soft. I'm going to cut this off as well. The stem color is really yellowing as well. I wonder if I should cut this top until the green part. Because I don't see any new leaves coming from the tips. And these are all... Yeah, it's more like dried out. Oh, actually, there's a little part there. Okay, maybe I'll leave it. Okay, I'm just going to leave this one leaf and see how this guy will do. Put it in a indirect, I mean, it gets morning sunlight, but... Let's see how this will do. Maybe I'll do an update video in a few months, I guess. I don't know how long it will take this tree to recover. I don't know if it, I can get it to, re, you know, get it to recover or not. But let me see. Mm -hmm. 
is not but um, that's it for my fiddly fig care if you have any questions please ask or if you see any if you heard anything that I was saying wrong please comment as well but this is my um, care like how I do you know how I care for my fiddly fig I'm no expert of course so this is how I do mine so you know it could be different depending on where you are and the environment you are in but just wanted to share how I care for my fiddly fig so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one bye